Today, IBM is recognised worldwide as one of the few organisations that can help businesses of any size with security. Someone who is perfectly placed to talk to us about what's hot in this area is Craig Smelzer, Vice President Development, IBM Security Software. Craig, as organisations move increasingly onto the cloud, what is the impact on security if it's not rigorous enough? Well, for many organizations, the cloud is their IT infrastructure. And one of the concerns that you have as a, as a dependent on this IT infrastructure is, will my business process, will my business be secure as I depend on it? And things like, will my clients and their identities be preserved, their security be preserved? Will the data that I store or they store be made private? And these are some of the things that, that uh, uh, organizations need to be concerned about. Now, by and large, the issue really happens when you're mixing services from clouds, different cloud providers. If you're going to one cloud, of course, the cloud provider is going to have a set of security capabilities. But as organizations try to branch out and offer a collage of services, maybe I'm going to get an identity service or a set of um, you know, identity or finance capabilities from cloud provider A and I want to mix that with uh, inventory management services and Salesforce management services. They'll likely all have different techniques for doing that. Or some will have more rigorous capabilities than other. What you don't want is a least common denominator because your business might have a set of risks, a risk profile that uh, uh, whose risk is greater than any one of the lower, common, lower uh, security capabilities that one of your providers has. What then should people be looking at so they're not going to the lowest common denominator? Well, the first thing I like to advise folks is don't build your risk profile based on what your cloud provider provides. Build your risk profile based on the services you're providing your clients. So it starts from a top-down view of what your business needs, what your clients need, the services that your clients expect, the assurances you're providing with those services. And then you back into, okay, what cloud providers can meet that? And because it is pretty much the wild, wild west, um, you're going to need to probably go in and be very prescriptive with some of your service providers. You're going you're to need perhaps to um, have challenged them in some areas around uh, capabilities they might have. With so many organizations now using social media to connect with customers, what's the impact then on enterprise security? In fact, this is a problem now as organizations try to recognize that people not only work but they have lives and part of their lives is inter interacting with social media sites um, that many of these uh, employees are putting information on these sites that are compromising or perhaps uh, even uh, giving uh, intellectual property away. One classic example of that is uh, where a person goes to a uh, uh, maybe a Facebook site uh, and talks about some meeting they were in that perhaps was confidential. Or maybe, uh, you know, maybe there's a, uh, uh, your machine is infected and uh, you go into a site and all of a sudden access to your hard drive, including sensitive documents, becomes, uh, you know, becomes available to, to the site. What's the next generation of security threats then? We publish twice a year uh, something we call the X-Force Trend Report. Uh, the X-Force is a security organization that um, uh, within my team actually uh, of literally uh, scores and scores hundreds of people that uh, evaluate all sorts of security events by virtue of IBM's worldwide presence uh, by virtue of the amount of relationships we have with our clients uh, we have unique access to many 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 security events uh, for instance uh, many organizations completely outsource their uh, IT to us so on their behalf, we run their infrastructure. As a result, we have uh, obviously a visibility into vulnerabilities that they're seeing. So we take that information, we take all the public identified vulnerabilities, and we, uh, we write trends. We have, a, we have a view into what the industry is doing and what the bad guy is doing. 
Well, one of the things that's been striking in the past uh, few months, actually, is A, uh, the increase in attacks. It has gone up dramatically in the past six to eight months. Secondly, is the kind of attack that's happening. Um, the kind of attack that's happening is what um, we like to call advanced persistent threats. Um, think of it as someone sort of hiding in your closet uh, and maybe while you're gone, running around and unlocking a window here and there, or maybe poking a hole in the roof, or, you know, a series of different things, maybe none of which in and of themselves are a real violation, but when taken together, or perhaps, uh, you know, over a period of time can create tremendous, uh, can create a tremendous disruption. Maybe you could lose something. Someone left the window open, and during the day when you're not there, you lost a book off the shelf. You may not even know you lost the book off the shelf. It's this kind of a threat that's happening. Um, and the way it's happening is through a different, uh, a really different mechanism. It's not, it's not really as much about viruses on your computer. It's not so much about malware that's coming to your computer. It's, frankly, through common things like PDFs. It used to be a PDF was just a page but now a, a page of text. Now a PDF is music, it's video, it's programs. And people don't worry, never worried about clicking on PDFs. Now when you click on PDFs, we're seeing again and again these threats, these unlocking of the windows, these uh, subtle things that you know, over a period of time are creating serious concern. In a recent interview, you said, the world is moving away from a perimeterized security model. What do you mean by that? We've got to come up with a better word. Perimeterized security model uh, is basically says we put a moat around the castle, around the perimeter of, the, of the, the fortress that we're protecting. And pretty much that's been our model for security forever. I mean, it used to be we'd have the data center, we'd have uh, all of the machines in the data center, we'd you know, hire the security people to keep people out, uh, and we felt secure, and, and by and large that worked very well. Well, with things like cloud, uh, as well as with uh, you know, other kinds of advances where capabilities are not just in the data center, uh, they're from different providers, that perimeter, that moat around is not particularly useful. Also, we found that we've had to poke holes in the moat because that moat actually is now providing cloud services for everyone else. And so in order to provide cloud service for everyone else, you need unfettered access to it, or at least more unfettered than the, the perimeter security we had before. And so as the world moves to technologies like the cloud, as applications become amalgamations or integrations of capabilities from multiple different places, that perimeter doesn't work anymore. If I was a CIO of a mid-market company, is IBM ready to help me with that end-to-end -end capability now? For our large enterprise clients, they often have skills and capabilities. Well, one of the things IBM can offer because of our rich set of capabilities and our rich set of uh, expertise is we can come in and consult and give you advice uh, that brings the best of what the enterprise clients are doing to your business. You don't have to have the security geek as your IT person. Uh, we can be your security geek, and we can come in and share that perspective, give you that end-to-end -end view. And so when we come in and we talk to them about identity and access, we can offer that as a service. We can offer that as a consulting service. We can offer that as a delivered service. And for them, we can take that need for expertise out of their hands. And, and, and they find that you know, often a, uh, you know, a great uh, way for them to focus on their core competency.